to talk about that, we're joined now by air quality expert Lindsay Marr, who's an environmental engineering professor at Virginia Tech, and Dr. Chun Wai Chow. She's the director of respirology at U of T and a lung transplant physician. Uh, Professor Marr, let's start with you. As you saw the air quality readings and, and warnings roll in, what was your reaction? It was pretty shocking because this level of pollution is really unprecedented for the eastern U.S. We've seen fires like this affect air quality in the western U.S., but really never before in the eastern U.S. And what were the numbers and, and what did they mean? Well, in the U.S., we measure air pollution in terms of air quality index or AQI, and the numbers were the number of 100 is kind of borderline, and the numbers were 400, um, which again is really much higher than we've ever seen. You know, in Canada, they use a different scale, one to 10, they call it the air quality uh, health index. And so on that, it would be a 10 plus. Uh, Dr. Chow, you're based uh, in the Toronto area. How serious have the health risks been over the last few days? Oh, I think it has been serious, and I think this is the first time uh, that I know of in Toronto where the weather forecast was uh, smoke. And uh, from the point of view of people who are elderly, people with chronic lung diseases or chronic you know, cardiac diseases, this really did pose a significant health risk for these folks. I think, uh, doctor, uh, parents in particular, parents of young children, were anxious in places like Toronto and, and I'm sure all, all the places hit by smoke over the last few days. What about the risks to children? The, 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 the risk for children and at both uh, sort of age range is, is quite high because they're the ones who are much more susceptible to the adverse effects from, you know, cough, respiratory symptoms. And for kids in particular, you know, the effect on potentially harming their lung function over time. I think, you know, the decision for a lot of school boards to cancel, you know, recess and, have, and, and not allow the children to play outside was a really wise decision. Professor Marr, it's easy for those of us who aren't experts to hear, you know, these warnings and know that there were forest fires and just figure that smoke from the fires. But, but what was in the air that was, that was creating the problems? Um, the biggest problem is the particles in the wildfire smoke. So, the, you know, when there's a fire, you get kind of gases and particles that are formed. And really, it's these particles that are from, uh, they're, they mostly have carbon in them, um, kind of like what you would see if you had a campfire. And, but it's at really, really high levels, like higher than we've seen before. And that's the, the concern. And, and I'm asking this question not knowing the answer, which is a dangerous thing to do, I suppose, but but let me just ask you, did it get mixed in with other things like, you know, car exhaust, industrial pollution, that sort of thing? Uh, was was that adding to, to the soup up there? Yeah, there was a, it was a big soup. Um, and so the wildfire smoke did add to what was already there. Although, um, because wildfire smoke is blowing in from these more uh, kind of remote areas, then some of that area is coming in and pushing out some of the uh, kind of industrial and vehicle emissions. But uh, the kind of, it, it's all together there in this big mix. Um, obviously, the wildfire smoke is really the dominant thing right now. I'm going to ask each of you this question because we're going to see this smoke again. I think there's no doubt of that, no matter where our viewers in Canada are, are living. So maybe, Dr. Chow, I'll begin with you. What advice do you have for people the next time uh, this kind of haze and smoke sets in? The best protection is to actually avoid it. So not exercise outside, spend your time indoors, find a place where there's air conditioning, where good uh, filtration. Uh, so HEPA filters where you will not be exposed to those particulate matters that uh, you know, was talked about earlier. And Professor Marr, pick up on that. If you can, uh, a lot of us, you know, closing windows and, and doing our best to, to keep the, the bad air outside, but I think you have some specific guidelines for people. Yeah, certainly indoors, if you have a portable air cleaner like a HEPA air filter or purifier, um, definitely you want to run that on high, keep your windows closed. Um, if you have uh, air conditioner, a window air conditioner, um, you can run that, make sure the filter is properly installed in that. Um, and some of them have a setting that allows you to switch between recirculated and outdoor air. You want recirculated air for sure. Um, and then you probably want to minimize your use of the bathroom and kitchen exhaust fans, because if you run those, then you're pulling in air from outside to replace some of the air that they're sucking out. Um, and then if, you, if the smoke is still bothering you indoors, 
I would recommend wearing an N95 or KN95, a really high quality mask that can help um, protect you and prevent you, the, you from breathing in those particles. Excellent advice. Nice uh, analysis from both of you. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Thanks so much. Thank you.